Once again, it's play ball time. And another unbelievable page about to be written in Orange Bowl history. A long road since that first little 1933 game before 3,500 fans. Turn the pages in the unbelievable and glorious Orange Bowl history, and you hear the sound of football, the glory of sport, its gridiron heroes, its excitement and color, the glorious blare of big, beautiful bands of America. This spectacle, that is Florida's Orange Bowl, has spread its fame to all corners of the globe. It's buried around the clock. Fantastic attractions have universal appeal. The Orange Bowl story is more than football. Florida's nonprofit Orange Bowl Committee puts a year's planning and perspiration into each year's special. The annual Gridiron Classic is backed up by big time show business, which thrills the nation. The noted columnist Walter Winchell once referred to the Orange Bowl show spectacles as making everything else seem small time. The pregame and halftime shows are a carefully guarded secret until the huge props and bands move on the field to delight a packed stadium, plus 25 million or more armchair TV quarterbacks on national television. The excitement and splendor of the Orange Bowl famed King Orange Jamboree, the country's largest nighttime parade, enthralls a half million people who sit and stand along Miami's Palm Line, Biscayne Boulevard, and Flagler Street. America's and the world's most beautiful girls and queens in magnificent costumes and swimsuits adorn the lavish, unbelievably beautiful floats. Colorful school bands, majorettes, cheerleaders from all sections of the country thrill the New Year's Eve crowd. each year as they churn up Biscayne Bay in the Orange Bowl regatta. Orange Bowl Junior Tennis Championships attract players from more than 38 foreign countries, including the greatest international interest. Glorious and dazzling events have made the Orange Bowl the country's nationally featured nighttime sports spectacular. Highlighting on New Year's night in the Orange Bowl, two of the nation's greatest college football teams. Unbelievable are the thrills and pageantry of the annual Orange Bowl Classic. Unbelievable is its story. It all started on a shoestring back in the Depression year of 1933 with a population of 125,000. A small group of civic and sports-minded Miami men interested in the city's growth arranged for Coach Chick Meehan's Manhattan University to play the University of Miami. It was called the Palm Festival. The queen was Margaret Sweat, and Sweat she did. They brought her on the field in a cellophane bag. They forgot to cut air holes, and she almost smothered. Luckily, the bag split, and out staggered the queen, gasping for air to make it a breathless beginning. Underdog Miami licked favored Manhattan 7-0 on a special touchdown play, cooked up a few days before the game by Illinois' visiting coach, the immortal Bob Zupke, shown here in a rare photo with his own immortal halfback, Red Grange. The name is changed to the Orange Bowl Classic. Miami gets a new wooden stadium, erected out of $12,000 worth of second-hand lumber. Ernie Seiler hornswoggled for $1,000 from a defunct Legion parade. The attendants climbed to 5,134. Co-ed threw oranges to the crowd. Photographs were transmitted by wire photo for the first time, 1937. The voice is the great sports announcer, Ted Music. It's just a few minutes before game time, and the stands are ablaze with the color of bands and flags and gay summer clothing. The day is bright and the field fast without a sign of rain in Florida's sunny Orange Bowl. The 37 Classic was the first coast-to-coast -coast radio network broadcast. 1938, a new stadium seating 22,000 had replaced the wooden seats.
1939, the Orange Bowl hits the big time. Armed with pictures of palm trees and pretty girls, the country's national champion, the Tennessee Balls are persuaded to play undefeated Oklahoma in Miami's modest little bowl. 5,000 new seats are added in a hurry. Five All-Americans help focus the national spotlight on Miami's bowl. Tennessee had All-Americans Cappy Go, Wyatt, and Suffrage. Oklahoma had Young and McCullough. Among the country's top sports writers on hand was the late Damon Runyon for international news. Coach Bob Malin's national champions lived up to its number one rating in one of the roughest games in history. The Vols quarterback, George Capigo, also demonstrated his All-American reputation as he ran and passed the Vols to a 17-0 victory. It's a Peter Pan theme for the festivities. In case you've forgotten, Peter Pan personified eternal youth. Georgia Tech's 1940 razzle-dazzle offense baffled everybody in the stadium, including Missouri, led by All-American Paul Christie. Here's Tech's All-American end, Bob Heisen, on a tricky end-around play as he galloped 60 yards for a touchdown to put Atlanta's magicians in front 14 to 7. Later, Tech's clever little 140-pound quarterback, Johnny Marsh, fools Missouri again with his hidden ball act. And their last touchdown run made it a 21-7 victory over Missouri's conference champ. The clock reaches 1942. One of the most brilliant player performances in Orange Bowl history is written. The red jersey Georgia Bulldogs and their broken jaw, bow-legged package of dynamite and iron mask. Frankie Sinkwich set the Orange Bowl on fire. He ran, passed, and spearheaded six touchdown drives, resulting in a 40 to 26 win over Texas Christian. Bold Queen Eileen Knapp wore red, white, and blue and was called Miss Victory. The crowd wore mostly khaki. Thousands of servicemen were admitted free. Others participated in a patriotic theme, 1944. The Orange Bowl Classic is selected by the armed forces for shortwave broadcasts all over the world. LSU upset favored Texas Aggies. The clock reaches 1946. The war is over. Visitors from everywhere pour in to enjoy the rejuvenated classic. In the 46th game, it's Holy Cross playing University of Miami. Here's the final play which made whole history. The score tied 6-6. Holy Cross in white has the ball in Miami territory. Their tailback drops back and fires the pass to his receiver. It looks like a fingertip completion as Miami's defensive backs in orange jerseys close in. But the ball gets away, bounces in the air, and Miami's orange-shirted safety man, Al Hudson, moves in toward the free ball at his 11. Hudson leaps with an outstretched hand like a ballet dancer, intercepts, and balances the ball on his fingertips. The ball almost gets away, but he recovers and heads for the sideline with frantic Georgetown players in pursuit. At the 40, three Holy Cross men appear to have him trapped as the final gun is popped. But the rules allow a play to be completed once it has started. So he continues his race to glory. One play becomes a legend for Miami's Al Hudson, a nightmare for Holy Cross. The year is 1947. A five-star general named Dwight D. Eisenhower and Mrs. Eisenhower attend their first Orange Bowl game. Coach Jess Neely's rice out with General Bob Malin's Tennessee Balls eight to nothing. In 1948, Miami's Gene Bigger was queen. Gene is wife of movie star Dean Martin. Georgia Tech edged Kansas 20 to 14 in the 48th headline. The stadium was double-decked to seat 60,000. 
1952. In the closing minutes, George Sauer, Baylor's coach, and Tex Bobby Dodd pace the sidelines with a score tied 14 to 14 as Tech lines up to try a field goal on its last play. It's good for a 17 to 14 Tech win. Now 1954, another great page. Maryland, the nation's number one team, is upset seven to nothing by Coach Bud Wilkinson's Oklahoma Sooners. 1955, Queen Carolyn Stroop salutes a crowd of 70,000 in the enlarged, ever-growing stadium. Vice President Richard Nixon sees his alma mater, the Duke Blue Devils, uphold their conference honor, breezing over Nebraska 34-7. The year 1956, again the Orange Bowl lands the top two teams on rushing Oklahoma, wearing the nation's number one crown, rolled over undefeated, untied Farrell 20 to six. Another great Oklahoma 11 down Duke 48 to 21 before a record crowd of 76,561. For its 25th silver anniversary, the Orange Bowl turns on the charm. Syracuse players enjoy a warm welcome. The clock is moved back to spotlight 25 wonderful years. Queen Anita Green and a huge birthday cake are the center of attraction. Only two points separated Oklahoma and Syracuse from perfect seasons, but the nation's invincible Oklahoma Sooners, making their fourth appearance in six years, utilize great blocking and lightning speed for long cross-country runs. The hand coach Ben Schwartzwalder's orange men of the beat 21 to 6. Now to the glorious 60s. Round the globe, Miami is known as the playground of the world. age 60 to become America's greatest gridiron show spectacular, featuring remarkable action and touchdown gallops. It becomes big time show business that thrills the nation on and off the gridiron with its flair and fanfare. over a fine Missouri team, 14 to nothing. 1961 is a brilliant page. On deck for the Classic is a great Navy team for their first bowl appearance. Midi coach Wayne Hart points out a Navy play designed to baffle Missouri New Year's Day. Honored guest is a Navy World War II hero, President-elect John F. Kennedy, on deck to root for the Midi. Now, early in the game, Missouri tries to score at Navy's two, but it misfires as Navy's defensive end steals Missouri's intended lateral. And Greg Matthews, the mini end, is on his way to glory for 98 yards and the longest touchdown in Orange Bowl history.
Turnabout is fair play. So this time, Missouri steals the Navy pass, and Norman Beale is off for 90 yards and the Tiger touchdown. Acrobatic catch in the corner end zone by Navy's All-American Joe Bellino winds up the spectacular battle won by Missouri, 21-14. 1962, the day it rained in Florida's sunny Orange Bowl. Miss Universe brought her umbrella, Debbie Reynolds her raincoat, LSU coach Paul Diesel a grim look. Going into the last half, LSU led 11-7. Their final touchdown by Field makes it a 25 to 7 victory for the Titans. New Year's Day, 1963. Mighty Alabama versus Mighty Oklahoma. Photographers cover the arrival of honored guest President Kennedy, who later will toss the silver dollar from his seat in the crowd to start the game. Quarterback Joe Namath warms up for Bama. The president tosses the coin from his position in the crowd. Bama won the toss. Here is their All-American, Joe Namath, throwing a home run to Williamson early in the game to put the tide in front seven to nothing. <laughs> Oklahoma Sooners bounce back with a 56-yard aerial bomb to Baumgarten. Watch closely. A vicious tackle by Bama's All-American, Lamar Jordan. Jars loose the ball from Oklahoma, and the tide recovers. Alabama takes over at the halftime. A Broadway theme highlights the halftime show spectacle. In the last half, Coach Bear Bryant, Bama 11, execute again the perfect play as Clark takes the pitch out from Namath, the round in, and breezes down the sideline for their second touchdown. As time runs out, Oklahoma has its last chance to get on the scoreboard and almost pull off the perfect play, but Alabama hauls them down 17 to nothing, along with their perfect Orange Bowl record. The 30th anniversary pregame show is dedicated to the memory of President John F. Kennedy. Moments after the kickoff, Nebraska's All-American quarterback Dennis Claridge fakes a handoff, slides to the weak side of the field for a game-opening blockbuster touchdown run of 68 yards to put the Cornhuskers in front seven to nothing. Second half, Auburn is behind 13 to nothing, but quarterback Jimmy Seidel gets hot. He hits Bucky Wade down the middle for a strike. From a deep shotgun formation, Jimmy Seidel gets a direct pass from center, races for the coffin corner, and nose dives for an Auburn touchdown to make it 13 to seven. Auburn fights the clock in the game's final minutes. Jimmy Seidel now passing again. A beauty over the middle to Rose for 18 yards. The fired up Auburn Tigers at Jimmy Seidel close to pay dirt. Seidel connects again to Rose. Seconds left, last chance. Seidel's pass is broken up by Bruce Smith and the Nebraska Cornhuskers win the Pearl Anniversary Orange Bowl Classic. The New Year's Day football classic becomes a night classic.
night, 1965. Presenting for the first time the country's first nationally featured nighttime bowl classic and show spectacular. Another glorious page in the tradition of the Orange Bowl as the nation's new national champion, Alabama, beats head on with mighty Texas, the previous champion. Alabama's famed coach, Bear Bryant, receives a friendly greeting from the opposition, Texas's great coach, Darrell Royal. Awaiting play, the touchdown queens who recover football. The clock is moved to Ernie Coy, the Longhorns All-American, who becomes the real McCoy for Texas as he breaks free with great blocks and romps 79 yards to write a new page in the history books and puts Texas in the lead. Later, in the second quarter, the Longhorns and White explode again with a big play. Their second home run, a touchdown aerial bomb from Jim Hudson to George Sauer. Behind 14 to nothing, Bama's injured quarterback, Joe Willie Namath, unexpectedly comes off the bench and fires one to Perkins for 25 yards. Namath connects again to Perkins for nine. This time, Joe Willie spots Trimble for a strike. Good for 12. Again, Bama's super quarterback finds his target. It's good to Tollinson for 15. Joe Willie puts the Crimson Tide back in contention with a strike to Trimble for a touchdown. Later, this great catch by Lamont sets up another Texas touchdown. And with 27 seconds left in the half, Ernie Coy sails in for a Texas TD to make it 21 to 7 at halftime. The glorious halftime pageantry unfurls with five storybook castles in a make-believe sky, which reveal the queen and her court. Bluebird star fairies flutter among the colorful towers, and 500 bandsmen form a crescent-shaped moon at one end of the field to enthrall the nation's largest television audience and a packed stadium. Now, in the third quarter, it's the incredible Joe Namath passing for another tied touchdown strike to Perkins to put Alabama back again in the ball game. In the fourth quarter, Alabama's 26-yard field goal makes it a 21-17 count. Now, watch these last plays closely as Namath's precision pitching advances the ball to the Texas Six to set up a classic battle of inches at the Texas Longhorns goal. Alabama now has the ball on second down, two yards from victory. It's hold that line for Texas. The Longhorn goal. Now, third down. Bowman pulls it for one yard as the pressure mounts. It's fourth down, less than a yard, and Texas holds Namath on the quarterback sneak by inches to make it a historic goal line set and upset victory by the Longhorn over a truly great national champion in the best bowl game in memory. There's no end to the Orange Bowl story. New pages will continue to be written as new young champions develop from all sections of the country and set their sights toward fame and glory in the Orange Bowl. New visitors and oldsters will appear in the roaring crowd to cheer them on. Beautiful school bands, cheerleaders and majorettes in bright uniforms with inspiring music cheers and maneuvers will continue to add to the thrill, spirit, and color of Orange Bowl pageantry. New magnificent floats will sail Biscayne Boulevard 
adorned with the most beautiful girls and costumes. And so, from the shoestring depths of a 1933 depression, with $3,000 raised, plus 3,000 bleacher seats, and $1,500 promoted the morning of the game, a golden dream called Orange Bowl became a glorious, unbelievable spectacle, annually inspiring and thrilling a nation and the world.